Hey everyone, I'm Lorenzo, and in this video I'm going to talk about all Marvel games for the Nintendo Wii. I'm going to talk in general about the first two games as they are pretty similar in gameplay. Their story and other content is different, but I will get into the details later. Ok, so Marvel Ultimate Alliance and its sequel, Ultimate Alliance 2 The Rise of Apocalypse, are button mashing games. It's a 4 player top down brawler where you plow through waves of enemies. Both games have 27 characters, and each character feels and behaves in a unique way, so the developers did a great job here. Also the games don't have only parts where you are hacking through small enemies, but boss fights too, that are easy to beat once you know the secret of the boss. Also the games have puzzles. As you might know from my streams, I'm not a big fan of puzzles, but hey, adding puzzles makes the gameplay more varied. The puzzles are kind of dull, but at least they give a little variation to the gameplay. Also an awesome feature of the games is that they have co-op multiplayer, so that you can play the games with your friends. Up to 4 people can play this game in co-op. Also there are different game modes like hardcore where if you die once you die for good or a mode where the teammates you choose are the only teammates you play the whole story with and if one of them dies they remain dead and other game modes. Please know that these modes are available only after you finish the story. As for frame rate, it has some occasional frame drops and loading times can be long, but I can't complain about this aspect. You get to upgrade your characters to make them stronger, you upgrade them by playing with them. It's like RPG games, the more you play with a character, the more his or her stats get boosted. And now the difference between 1 and 2 is that 2 has some new features added like the fusion powers, by holding a button you can do some sick combo moves, like for example Spider-Man pulls enemies with his webs and Wolverine slices them with his claws and other character combinations. Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer is similar to Marvel Ultimate Alliance in gameplay, only that this game is much much worse. You don't get characters to choose from, just the Fantastic Four. That's about it, no other characters. The game consists of button mashing just like Ultimate Alliance, but you don't get to see variety in enemies or in locations. All you do is repetitive button mashing with the same enemies and in the same places. I don't recommend you to play this game, it's not worth it. Spider-Man 3 is actually Spider-Man 2 with a new paint job. But considering that Spider-Man 2 was a masterpiece, I grew up with the game, it will always be a masterpiece for me, Spider-Man 3 is pretty good and the worst, both at the same time. I mean the combat is mindless button mashing and the missions aren't that wow, they are rather repetitive and many of them are boring, boss battles don't really feel like boss battles since they give you a similar feel to the normal button mashing gameplay you do, but this game is a meme goldmine. You can find so many things that are done in such a bad fashion that you, you just love them. It's love at first sight. Like in Spider-Man 2 you get a lot of activities in the city and the game follows the movie very loosely, meaning that if you play the game you have no idea what happens in the movie. And the game has more villains than in the movie, you also fight lizard and Morbius, the man vampire. You get the black suit and roaming New York is as fun as ever. So this game is good and bad at the same time. But the bad can be easily overlooked when you see that the game is a meme gold mine. Oh and worth mentioning is that the Wii controls are actually pretty comfortable and they don't get in the way. It's it's the same game as you get on the other consoles. The same game overall in the big picture because some missions were actually cut out in the Wii version. You get less missions than the PS3 or PC.
Spider-Man Friend or Foe is a basic beat'em up. Many people consider it a very good game since they grew up with it, but I didn't, and I still can't get over the idea that Spider-Man is earthbound. He swings only on few occasions. It's unorganic for the character. But let's get personal opinions aside and tell you about the game. So you play, the, so the story unfolds in seven different locations, and you play with sixteen different characters. What you see in the video is what you will mostly do in the game, like in the usual beat'em ups. A nice touch though is the team takedown. You can combine two characters and get a screen, a screen clearing combo. The game is called Friend or Foe because in this one Spidey works in teams with his foes to protect the earth, so the foes become friends for this occasion. Overall it's a pretty standard beat'em up. If you know the genre then you know what to expect from the game. Spider-Man Web of Shadows is for a reviewer a hard game to give a verdict. Why? Well, it's awesome, but you can still count flaws that don't bother you, but well, if you don't like the style of the game, you can put them in the flaws basket. Ok, so when you play this game, never judge the game by its cover. Not in the literal sense, but when you play it, you will encounter bad voice acting, but the type of bad voice acting that is very likable. I mean, those voice cracks or overreacted reactions are fun, even if they sound, well, unprofessional. But not only that the voice acting sounds unprofessional, but the whole game doesn't feel that professional, as it isn't a serious game. I mean, it tries to be mature, with the inverted commas to them, meaning that the game has a dark allure. The city is in chaos, Venom is going on a rampage, but still, it feels teenagey. The game was either written by a teenager or it was intended for a teenager. But it's the type of teenage game that is awesome, and even if you can spot that it's not intended to be a scientifically accurate dark story, the exaggerated actions are badass. I mean, you can break dance, fight on walls, you can do sick combo moves in the air to obliterate your opponent. For black suit fans, you can switch to the black suit whenever you want, and you can permanently play with the black suit as much as you want. The swing mechanics might feel clunky at times, but the controls are actually pretty good. Also, as I said, the actions feel like a teenager tried to write a dark story. At one point, I thought they made a crossover with GTA San Andreas. Or, well, more like Saints Row, but San Andreas is more popular. Anyway, so my advice is to not judge the game by first impressions. Play it till the end. It's an incredibly badass game that should get more praise and better reviews. It's badass, especially the combat animations. That, even if on Xbox and PS3 look more awesome, on the Wii they are still good. They are still good looking. Even if they look more plain. Oh, and an unforgettable feature in the game is that Spider-Man can Naruto run. The Incredible Hulk is boring. It's nice that you have free room, but they managed to make you wish that the game didn't have free room. The spaces are so big and Hulk moves so slow that it's a chore getting from one mission to the other. You can jump, but it's useless. You don't travel faster when you jump, the only fast option is to run. And what is worse is that only later in the game can you unlock the sprint, which means that you'll be jogging a big portion of the game. And seeing Hulk jog through a city that looks empty is just underwhelming. The draw distance makes the game look cheap, I mean the fog already gives you a hint that this game is far from being a masterpiece. The gameplay sounds nice when you hear about it. I mean, you fight the military, destroy helicopters and tanks, and can even destroy buildings by punching them, but when you get to actually play the game, the execution isn't that good. Overall, it's a dull game that could have been way better. I mean, look at the Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction. That game is amazing, and it has the same game formula as this one. Iron Man and Iron Man 2. I don't know if I should be disappointed or not about the games. 
I mean, Iron Man is a badass character and he deserves a great game. But I know that it's incredibly hard to make an Iron Man game. It's tricky to make a game that is actually good with the character. For the two, the Iron Man games on the Wii are average. Maybe I judged them so hard because I really wanted a great Iron Man game. They are not bad games, don't get me wrong, but they don't really stand out. The first Iron Man game consists of 13 levels, and in almost all of them you have to plow through any enemy you encounter. No matter how the task is formulated, you still end up just beating anything that moves. As the other levels where you don't plow through enemies are boss battles, where you still beat up stuff that moves, <laughs> the bosses. As for enemies, you get Whiplash and Titanium Man. The controls are interesting and mainly good, but the downside to them is that you can't have the perfect combination of fighting enemies and flying. So most of the time you rocket boost like a badass dude near the enemies to just stand still and shoot the enemies down. It would have been awesome to be able to fly around while fighting. The level designs and graphics are good. It's just that since the character is so awesome, he deserves a better game. But if you would ask me how a better game could be made, I can't answer that. As I really don't know how to make a great Iron Man game. It's like responding to the question on how to make a great Superman game. I still wait a good Superman game to come out. But the nice thing about the game is that you get 7 different suits you can choose from. And the game is not bad, it's actually good and enjoyable. It's just my high expectations or cravings of a badass Iron Man game. And as for Iron Man 2, it's the same story. The tie-in game, even though it has the movie poster on the cover, it doesn't have the movie plotline in the game. But an original story, just like Iron Man 1, the previous game. And the gameplay is similar to the one in the other game, you just shoot whatever is against you. At least here you get more boss battles, but even those just consist on shooting the weak spot of a giant robot and then gunning them down. X-Men Origins Wolverine is a beat em up. You beat one wave of enemy, then progress to the next one, the enemies are generic and even if they change appearance they essentially are the same enemy types but with different paint jobs. But on the plus side it's nice that Wolverine gets new combo moves the more you progress in the game and that the Wii controls have been nicely integrated in the moments where motion controls would make sense. And this is it. I know it's a short description but there's not much to talk about the game. It's nice, I liked it, it's an action packed game and the gameplay is very engaging. Just try it, sure on paper it's repetitive, but you'll see that you're most probably going to enjoy the game. Marvel Super Hero Squad is a 2 player beat em up game. You get a basic attack, a heavy attack, jump attack, grab option and a finisher assigned. The combat is pretty basic, but it still remains fun. What gives the game its charm is the humor. Fans of the cartoon will feel like this game is an awesome iteration of the cartoon. A downside of the game is the checkpoint system. You can't save until the level is finished, and some levels are fairly long. The game is also pretty repetitive, but the funny cutscenes give you fuel to endure the repetitive button mashing of the game. Just to laugh again at the funny cutscene. Also we get 19 playable characters. Overall the game is awesome, especially for kids. And Marvel Super Hero Squad The Infinity Gauntlet is similar to the previous game, but this time the game feels more varied. It still consists of button mashing and solving puzzles, but still the game feels more varied than the other one. And better overall. Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions has an amazing presentation, but never play it on an emulator. What you see in the video is emulator footage. So if you try to play it on the Dolphin emulator, you will have actually some sort of Spider-Man on drugs. Some sort of Spider-Man LSD version. But if you play it on a Wii, it looks normal, just like it should look. 
but because it looks funnier this way I will leave the emulator footage on screen rather than filming my Wii. The game it falls short on the gameplay department and here the controls worked but still they felt clunky all the time and I had times where the controls wouldn't respond and overall the controls felt so clunky that after an hour of playing I said screw it. It had a killer narrative but I don't want to play this stuff anymore when there are so many good games I haven't played yet. So I watched the game movie on YouTube from where I left the game. And I want to say that this story is awesome. It's funny, it's dramatic, it has jaw-dropping CGI, I recommend you watch it. Its movie quality is very good. It could win an award for how good the story is. Gameplay-wise, it's a varied game. It's split into four Spider-Man sequences. In one of them you play, you play with the Amazing Spider-Man, in another one with the Black Suit, in another one with Spider-Man Noir, which has the stealth part of the game, and Spider-Man 2099, which is mostly brawling and free-falling. I recommend you watch the game's movie, it's a very good story. The presentation of the game is top-notch, but the gameplay mm, is kind of annoying, especially on the controls department. Spider-Man Edge of Time got bad reviews, but I don't understand how. GameSpot calls as flaws that the combat is too simple and the spaces are too confined. To the first one, I want to say that not only you can unlock more moves with points, but right from the bat you get quite a number of moves you can perform. You get a light attack and a heavy attack, plus you can web enemies and zip kick them, and also each one of the two Spider-Man you play with has a special ability, which kind of feels alike, but it's unique to have this thing as a permanent power. The Amazing Spider-Man has the spider sense, meaning that for a short period of time he's invulnerable to attacks. And Spider-Man 2099 creates a decoy and slows down time being too invulnerable to attacks when he uses his ability. So you get a lot of moves and for me the combat never got boring. A part I have to admit though, the tasks you do are kind of simple and stereotypical. Meaning that you have to platform in Spider-Man style, pull switches, avoid obstacles, but even if they are typical tasks, they have enough variety to them to be nice every time. They are not the exact same thing, even if, in their core, they are the same handful of activities. And the gameplay feels secondary many times, as the true spectacle of the game is its story. The main superstar in this game is not Peter Parker, but Spider-Man 2099, Miguel O'Hara. Ok, you play with both Spider-Man in tandem, but this game features one of the most annoying Peter Parkers. The attitude of Peter annoyed me in this game. But the story is epic, kept me wanting more. I wanted to see how the story unfolds, it was an incredible one. Ok, the science part is debatable, but as a narrative, it was awesome. The graphics were nice, the controls felt clunky at first, but after a few minutes they were comfy and good. It's a game I recommend you play. I liked it a lot. Thor God of Thunder is another beat-em-up. This time with Thor. There's not really much to say about the game. You beat one wave of enemy and progress to the other. You get some occasional flying levels and some occasional Wii motion integration. Overall the game is decent. You can have fun with the game. The controls are nice and the game feels satisfying. It's just that the game isn't memorable and doesn't stand out, but in rest, the game is pretty good. Captain America Super Soldier is another mediocre tie-in game. The game combines multiple elements into something that feels rather bland. The game is another beat-em-up, but this time the fighting system is similar to the Batman Arkham series. You get some turret sections, you get to solve puzzles, and you can throw your shield in the direction you point with the Wii mode. And this is the gameplay summarized. The game is decent to mediocre. It's playable and you can squeeze some fun out of it, but the dull and repetitive gameplay will make you want to play something else instead of this game. X-Men Destiny is another bad game. 
You choose between three characters, the son of a neo-Nazi, a football jock, or a Japanese immigrant abandoned by her parents on a boat. Then you can choose what powers your chosen mutant should have, and then you get into the game. There's not really much to say about the game. It's a beat em up. You know the drill. Beat one wave, progress onto the next. The presentation is nice, and the graphics look good. Until you see the horrible frame drops. Th that is, if you play it on an original console. If you play it on an actual Wii, then you are going to stumble upon many frame drops. But if you play the game on an emulator, you can correct the frames. But even then, you are fighting another problem. The level designs and the camera. Most places in the game are narrow corridors, and you'll have to find ledges too. But since the camera has such a bad angle, you can see where you have to go in order to progress in the game. Also, don't get the Wii version. The Wii version has half of the game. They've cut out many levels of the game. Just imagine that the PS3 version takes you around 4 hours to finish, whereas the Wii version takes you 2 hours and a half. Almost half of the game was cut out. And while playing the story on the Wii, some stuff doesn't make sense, since the story jumps and skips through the stories, and since it has parts cut out, you don't know what happened. And the story isn't the only thing cut out. Actually you get less costumes, less characters, you don't get a leveling system, and many more. Just don't get the Wii version. Marvel Super Hero Squad Comic Combat is a game for the U Draw board. Unfortunately, I don't currently own such a thing, which means that I can't review the game. But just know that it exists. The Amazing Spider Man is a good game, but be warned that it doesn't abide to the classic formula. People who like challenging games or to do stuff their own way won't like this game. The fighting mechanics are new. Now you have an attack button and a dodge button and you can web strike with another and interact with another button. I know it sounds close to the classic one, but you will feel many times that all of the fights almost feel like an interactive cutscene. In fact, all the game feels like a big interactive cutscene. The game tells you which button to press and everything is pretty easy and straightforward, boss fights aren't exciting or challenging, you just do what the game tells you to do and poof, that's it. Also, unlike the Xbox 360 and PS3 versions, the Wii version doesn't have free roam. It's a linear game, you jump from one mission to the other, without the free roam. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.